Would you like to make this planner with envelope cover from scratch? Keep watching! Hello, my name is Tina, I'm head of design of Victoria Designs and in this video I'm going to show you how to make this 4 month planner from scratch. And where do I get the planner pages you say? Opt in on the link below and the printable planner pages are yours. I also used these pages in another tutorial last year. If you want to check that out, there's a link for that too. Oh yes, if you like to craft with paper and you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, you're more than welcome to do so. And now let me show you how to make this planner. First, print your planner double-sided on normal weight paper, so that's 80 grams. I printed them on nine sheets and that covers about four months. So this would be a four month planner. If you want to make this a bit smaller, to make a smaller planner, just reduce the print percentage before you print. Also, make sure there's enough white space here because it's possible you need to cut off a bit. And then cut a piece of sturdy scrapbook paper the same size as your pages or at least the same height. If the page is a bit longer, that's no problem at all. We can cut off a bit later. My scrapbook paper is 250 grams and my chart says that's 92 pound cover paper. For the envelope flap, cut another piece of sturdy scrapbook paper the same height as your cover and the width that you want your flap to be plus three quarters of an inch. And if you work in centimeters, make that about one and a half centimeter. I like mine to be about three inches wide so I need a piece that's three inches and three quarters of an inch wide. If you use 12 by 12 scrapbook paper you can get both the cover and the flap out of one sheet look like this if you don't mind the flap being a bit shallow because if you want it very long that's just not going to work I think. First fold the cover in half. Because this notebook is going to be quite shallow, I'm simply going to bind it with staples. So now I'm going to figure out where my staple holes are going to be. You can choose to place them wherever you want, but I recommend measuring first. So I'm going to start with one and a half inch, about four centimeters from each side and make a mark one and a half inch or four centimeters and then determine the width of your staple. Mine is half an inch or 12 millimeter and with this information I'm going to put a mark where my second hole should be. Next step is to fold these pages in half. I like to fold a few at a time to make the folds more precise. And then open them all up again because we're not making signatures and place them on top of each other like this. Place them inside your cover and make sure this fold lines up with all the pieces, the papers and the cover. Use binder clips to secure Unless, of course, you like the thrill and excitement of not securing. Crafting can be adventurous too. But I like to play it safe and I'm going to use some binder clips just to keep everything in its place. And then poke a small hole on the marks using a needle or a awl. Just a small hole is enough. But make sure you go all the way through, of course. And then insert the staples. Then turn around and bend the legs. And to separate the staple, I just put my staples like this and use a small heavy tool to just click one off. Now you can remove the clips. And now you have some sort of a notebook here. This in itself is a pretty notebook already. I'm going to make it a bit more pretty, but the next steps are totally optional. Of course, the cover is a bit too wide. If you like that, perfect. But I like to cut this off so that every page lines up perfectly. And for that, I need a cutting mat, a metal ruler, and a heavy duty craft knife. I've showed you this in previous tutorials also. Just slide the blade 
Don't push too hard, just let the knife do its work. Several times. Make sure you keep your ruler firmly in place. That's very important. Push the ruler, don't push the knife. Another optional step is that you round all these corners. So these ones from the cover and of all these pages. But don't round the corners of this one because here we're going to attach the flap. But I'm not going to do that. And now let's make that flap. I could use the same pattern on the outside as I made the cover, but I'm going to switch it around. I'm going to put it like this. So my flap will be this beautiful blue, the backside of the scrapbook paper. Make vertical scores on 3 eighths of an inch and then 1 eighth of an inch further. In centimeter, if you don't have a scoreboard that is in inches, that's about one centimeter and then the next one half a centimeter further. But that's quite a lot. So if possible, make that one centimeter and three millimeter further. This piece, this narrow piece, is for the thickness of your notebook. And if you don't have a scoreboard, no worries. Just use a ruler and an embossing tool or a pen that is empty. Perfect. Now on the side that you didn't score, mark the center. Just some good old fashioned measuring. And then draw a line from the center to the start and to the end of the second score line. And then cut these out. If you like, of course, you can draw a very nice shape here too. But I'm just going to cut it straight. And then also cut a little piece from the tab to the end of the score line. Just a little triangle. This side. Just a little bit to make the edges cleaner. And then fold these scored lines. Because it's heavy paper and the lines are so close to each other, take your time. And when you're sure, you can use a bone folder. Then put double-sided tape on the front of this tab and completely fill it so it holds very well. Use multiple pieces if necessary. So. And as you see, I cannot fill the whole tab with this tape. So remove the backing and put another piece of tape on top. Open your notebook to the back cover and place the tab part right to the edge of the back cover. If you don't trust yourself, put a bit of glue stick over the top of the tape. This way you'll have a bit of error time before it sticks. Rub the tab to make it stick very well. There. And if you close it, there's your envelope. Now for the closure, I have one piece left from my 12 by 12 inch page. And I'm going to use that. And I'm going to cut four one inch circles. One, two, and I'm going to cut a one eight inch hole in the center. Now I am going to set these with eyelets, but if you like, you can use small brads instead too. And in that case, the size of the holes doesn't really matter. Just a simple hole with an awl is perfect. But I'm going to use 1 8 of an inch eyelets. So I'm going to cut a 1 8 of an inch hole in the center. You can use a regular hole punch there, but I'm going to use this magnificent beast. I'm going to cut two circles at once because this tool can have it. Make sure you're somewhere in the middle. Make a mark if you're not sure. 
there. These ones as well. Now measure and mark where you want your circles to be and cut 1 8 inch holes or regular holes with an awl. And I want my first circle to be about here, so that's about yeah, an inch. An inch from the top. Here's my mark and I want the other circle to be around here so I'm going to make a mark here too. And then cut an eighth of an inch hole there too or a regular hole. Make sure you don't punch your pages. I'm almost ready to set these. If you want to use small breads to hold them in place this is enough but if you like to use eyelets and your twine is a little bit thick this is how I do it. I'm going to punch four eighth of an inch holes far enough from each other and you'll see why in a minute. You don't need these, these can go. And then over these holes punch one fourth of an inch holes or a bit larger doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's too bad. This thing can punch one eighth of an inch holes and three sixteenths, but not one fourth. Make sure the hole you've already punched is right in the center of this punch circle. And there you have it. Not perfect, but perfect enough. And do this with all four of these holes. Now, if this looks a little bit too extreme for you, just skip it. But these will create space for the twine. Glue these together two by two to make them a bit more sturdy. Of course, you can glue them together before punching the holes. Take an eyelet, put a one inch circle on top. And then put two of these mini circles. Don't need to glue them. And then... Put it through this hole and hold it. Then use your eyelet setting tool. And when you're sure, go for it. There it is, sturdy in place. Do the same thing with the other one. Little eyelet, big circle on top, two of these little circles under and then through the hole. Keep it in place and when you're sure. And now your circles are in place. If you use brass, just punch another one inch circle and glue it on top to hide the legs. And then to close, wrap a piece of twine around this circle and make a knot. This is not a very long piece, it's, it's about 11 inch, you don't need much. And cut off the end. And now you can close this notebook like this. If you have too much left just cut it off. And of course this is quite minimalistic for me but you can ink the edges, ink these edges and add 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 until your cover is filled. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the tutorial and the free planner pages please give this video a big thumbs up, share this video with your friends that might like to see it too and I wish you a truly beautiful day. Bye everyone!